What's up? Another quarterback. Hold on. <clears throat> Happy Halloween, everybody. TJ Finley, freshman quarterback, LSU. Led them to a big win over South Carolina. Much needed win. Kind of one of those where, like, everybody that is a part of the purple and gold nation, if you will, went whew, big old sigh of relief to get a blowout win under the belt. And he just, uh, this true freshman, he seemed to really inject some confidence into their offense and then to really their whole team. That's just my view of it, watching it on television. I'm not sure, you know, how you felt about it, but that's certainly the way I saw it. Tremendous upside. He's huge, 6'6", 245 pounds. He's just a true freshman, right? And now he has to play. Well, he played really well. This is just six plays from that game against uh, South Carolina that I think show you some of the things he went through in the game show you a little bit of his talent, his calmness, and give you, I don't know, a taste of, I think, what we may be in for for a long time if he continues to progress at the position for LSU. So let's jump into it. First play was a touchdown here that we're going to look at where he just completes a short throw and a receiver makes a great run after the catch. Here's one that turns into a big play. It's almost hard to figure out how. Uh, they go bunch uh, receivers to the field, so bunch trips or tight trips to the field and running a bunch route. Number one up top goes out and kind of wheels and runs a vertical, and then it's double slants. Outside comes in, you're gonna see the inside receiver sort of follow and get behind the uh, first slant and run a slant behind it. They really get tight together on the route. I don't know that it's supposed to be that way. And on the back side, it's a good route. They go out route with the tight end and bring the back underneath. If you went into the boundary, you could high low right there and maybe get a first down on third and five. So let's watch the play. Snap of the ball. They come in. Double slants are on top of each other. Somehow he splits that and turns it into a touchdown. You know, missed tackles, and they had numbers. So when you look at this, first thing that jumps out is the two safety look in the middle of the field, but they're going to rotate this. And basically what they jump into is man-to-man -man responsibilities with safety coming up and free safety going back to play center field and uh, trying to kind of confuse or switch it up on a freshman quarterback. So that's one thing that jumps out at you. The other thing here is that it's not a hard throw and not really a clean read for him. As we said, we've got two receivers who are really close together. I'm not sure they're supposed to be that way. But because they rotated that safety up and ran the other one back, that uh, robber or dog safety or strong safety is now up here where you've got three defenders right in the area of the two receivers. He's square up to the ball carrier or, the uh, say, the carrier, the, the receiver who's catching the football. you got another on his hip, three defenders right there in his area. It's hard to figure out how they let him get free and split them for a touchdown. But basically it's just a guy falling down in coverage, one who's overrun it, and a really poor job by that safety not to close him out right there and let him get upfield. And it turns into a score. Good move down the field on the other safety as well. So it's a great individual play. This play is another touchdown. This is down on the goal line. You go three-man route. It's actually a pick play, rub route. The question is, is it a legal rub route or should it have been a penalty on the illegal pick? You decide. Rub route or pick play for a touchdown and the Wording is, according to kind of how you feel about it, is it a legal or not a legal play? Because you get a slant, you're trying to get in the way of one defender without blocking him and getting a call. Same thing on the outside. You're trying to get in the way of that defender without drawing a call so that you can get free in the back of the end zone. It works perfectly how they want it to, and that is they're in the way on the outside. But the question is, is the outside receiver blocking? Inside receiver does a good job of not blocking, getting in the way, and holding up the defender. Outside, it's it's contact. I mean, he really gets into him. You're going to see that. And the question is, is he blocking right here? And that is intentional by the receiver, but is it legal for him to do this downfield with the receiver coming open underneath, clearing the way while the ball is being thrown? And if you look, he never extends his arms. And I was um, reminded yesterday in a conversation about this, what we're told is that officials aren't really going to call that unless they clearly see this receiver with his arms extended blocking. As long as his arms aren't extended, they're probably not going to call it. At least that's what they're 
told it's still a little bit of gray area judgment call because the ball is being thrown while the blocking is happening downfield. But they get away with it, and it's an easy score. He did throw an interception in a ball game. And true freshman starting in first SEC game, you would expect maybe that to happen. And South Carolina does some good things on defense. This is one that's pretty clear what's happening to him, and I think it's an example of a really good corner baiting him into a throw, making him think he had it when he didn't have it. It was a really good play by the defense. Interception here, they're trying to run verticals, three receivers, two to the wide side, one into the boundary, and he chooses the one up top, uh, farthest away with the most cushion to that corner out there to the far side of the field, plenty of arm strength, and he knows that. Chooses that one-on-one, thinks about back shoulder, and the corner jumps all over it. After you throw in the pick, here's what I like. He hustles over, comes into the picture, and figures out some way to make the play and not give up the touchdown. Got in his way. That was good. Back to the play here. With the tight end lined up into the boundary, in other words, ball on the left hash and the tight end on the left side, they rotate that safety down over the top of him and and kind of show you that it's either going to be a man coverage underneath with a free safety or cover three with that free safety in the middle. So either man on the corners or some type of zone with those corners out there dropping in those thirds. I think he knows that. I think he sees that and can see it out of his peripheral vision right here that that's what's coming is a walk down with the safety over the tight end in some shape, form, or fashion. So that safety is going middle of the field. And when you snap the ball, you do see, and, and you're kind of, you know, alluded to that because of the positioning of the corner inside, hips turned, that it is going to be a drop coverage here, cover three uh, coverage with the corners dropping. So he's getting three verticals. He's going to have plenty of protection. It is actually um, seven-man protection. You have five offensive linemen. The sixth is the tight end. The seventh is uh, the running back. So he knows it's it's basically max protect against this look. It's just a matter of which side does he want to go to, far side with cushion or to his left into the boundary with less cushion. He chooses to his right. Now right here I think what he sees is the corner dropping, getting gone. And so the natural thought, kind of what you're taught, is if that corner turns his head and runs away, You've got the back shoulder throw because he's not going to give you over the top. He's retreating to take that away. So that's why I think quarterback is thinking back shoulder. But obviously the receiver, a little bit more experienced player, knows he doesn't have his hips turned. He's not looking at the sideline. He's looking back inside. So we don't really have the back shoulder right here. The read's got to go somewhere else. Instead, quarterback is throwing this back shoulder, and the receiver's not looking, but the DB is eyeballing him the whole way. So He baits him into this throw, and you don't have the back shoulder because he's able to put on the brakes and come catch the football. So it's a good job by the corner. He really baited a freshman quarterback into that throw and then jumps all over it. Here's an example of something that I I look at a lot with quarterbacks when I start watching their games is how do they handle themselves when pressure starts to come at them a little bit. And, you know, it's one thing if you can't block them and they're just totally – overwhelming you that's one thing but i'm just talking about where in the normal flow of the game every now and then a guy comes free into the pocket how do you handle that here's an example with tj finley all right watching this play here we're watching tv copy is going to be more about seeing what he does in the pocket versus seeing what's downfield because camera doesn't really show us a whole lot about the coverage but i thought it was interesting what he does in the pocket here with a rusher about to hit him he steps in there and drills a perfect throw when you watch what's happening It's initially a four-man rush, and everybody he has, including tight end and running back, are out in the route. So it's four-man rush versus five-man protection. If nobody comes, the only way they could get you is if they brought two linebackers. As soon as he sees that, he's not worried about having enough in protection, four versus five. What he's getting as he reads backside over here to this route is in his face is a twist right here on the line of scrimmage. Uh, So it's late, but the end is going in, and the tackle is going to loop around and try to get free that way. And that's actually what happens, is the twist is going to get there. 
so this is what I really like. Um, you know, any quarterback in the pocket right here, you either see it or you feel it. Okay, here comes pressure about to get hit. And this is not a junior or senior we're talking about. This is a true freshman who's standing in there, eyes where they're supposed to be, trying to read downfield and see some, you know, a defender or an open window or a receiver. And his mechanics are good. He's stepping into the throw. Uh, shoulders turn. He's not sinking to the contact that's coming at all, steps right into that free defender and makes a really strong throw. And I just think it's a really good sign for a freshman quarterback to do it. Now, the route was iffy to me. I don't know if it was a bust. You couldn't really tell what they were trying to accomplish. You had two receivers here kind of in the same area. Almost looked improvised because that's an end break where the ball's thrown outside. Who knows what the route is? I just know it's a really strong throw into a free rusher. I thought this next play was one of his better plays in the ball game in terms of read, timing, and then accuracy on top of it. I thought this was one of his better throws in terms of timing and accuracy during the night. Um, he's You can't see it on here, this copy, but you've got trips receivers to the wide side of the field with the ball here on the left hash for them. Well, watch it from this angle. He's going to get a four-man rush, plenty of protection with six and the back staying in, and just drills that crosser, hits him on a dead run. It's a big play. So, again, this is one with a little extra protection here, um, a sixth in protection, including the back, and they only give him a four-man rush. They go twist, actually, in the middle here, and that gets picked up really well by the uh, offensive line. So he's confident in the pocket, and he's reading the to the right. And, you know, what I like is his eyes are in the right place, and nothing going on with the rush affects his pocket, makes him move. And what he's doing is anticipating this throw. He's not just waiting to see it come open. He's going to anticipate it pretty good right here. And he gets that ball out, and he's putting it right on the ear of the defender. Even though he's appearing to be in the throwing lane, he knows what he's got coming, and that is that crosser behind. And so by throwing it early in the window where it's supposed to be, and it's accurate, Hits him on the run. He didn't have to stop, and it's a chance to turn it into big yards after the catch. That one was not only wide open, but it was perfect in terms of when he got the ball out, where he put the ball so his receiver had the best chance to make yards after the catch. Here's an example of kind of the opposite of that. Now, it's still a good play, good read, and a good throw. You're going to see that and a completion. But if the timing were a little sharper, which it will be as he grows and progresses, um, a little sharper timing and earlier throw here maybe turns into a bigger play with a chance to run after the catch. Here's one where he's a little bit late with the throw. Bunch formation, two by two, ball on the right hash, so they're really tight there on the left side, and they're going to get that outside receiver right in the middle of the field after play action. And he drills it in there, and it is a completion, but it could have been a little cleaner. Okay, and here's what I mean by that, um, and we'll watch it from a couple different angles. Again, play action, he's trying to find that void past the safety in the middle of the field there on first and 10. Tight end is staying in. Back is staying in. So you have seven-man protection. So for a young quarterback, that's good too because he knows if if all four of the front come, even if all three of the linebackers come as well, I still have seven on seven and can block all that up. And it just gives him a little max protect feel like he's not on an island out there in the second quarter of this ball game. The play action here into the belly pulls these linebackers up before they can drop into their coverage. That's what's actually going to get it open. But it's the timing here that that makes it a bang-bang play, I'll show you. So it's good here, you know, after the fake, he's getting set, putting that back foot in the ground, going to stand tall, and he's looking in the middle of the field to see where are these guys going to drop and where is the window going to be. Again, we can't see what's happening back down the field. We can only just see what's kind of underneath right now with the TV copy. Now, it's one hitch two hitch, and now the ball's coming out. And it's really, again, you're not complaining because it is a completion, but instead of it being a half second to a second earlier and it's completion here where you can catch and turn up, it's just a half second late where it's bang, bang because the linebacker is now turning back to find him. So they've actually, he's kind of brought him into that backside dropping linebacker. So you get the completion, but get him popped. When you watch it from another angle, He's just made the fake now. It's obvious you're going to get drops, and it's obvious he's a free release with a chance to find a throwing lane. You know that already coming. 
with a safety dropping deep in the middle of the field. So it's just a matter of hitting him in the right spot. And really, this is the right spot. That linebacker is starting to split. He's trying to find a zone to cover. And as soon as that's happening, you see he's kind of getting on his toes reading it. He wants to see him open in the middle of the field. And that's natural for a freshman. But instead of seeing it, his arm really should be up. And the ball on the tip of his fingers coming out right now off the ear of this linebacker. And if he does that, you got a chance to hit him running right here. But instead, it takes a little longer. The ball should be out right now. We should be looking at a ball that's actually in flight just off the shoulder of this official. It's going to hit my receiver running. But instead, it's one more hitch, and the ball now is over here, and it brings this backside linebacker into play. All right, thanks for watching. Six plays in the South Carolina game for LSU freshman TJ Finley. He looked pretty doggone good in that win, if you ask me. Seemed to give them, they're really the whole team, a, a little bit of confidence that they hadn't really seemed to have until that ball game the other day. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this, if you're first time here, do me a favor, subscribe. And if you hit that bell, you'll get a notification when I post a new video. And in the back half of this season, we're going to have a lot more of these. Individual players, games that we'll break down and draw up and that kind of thing. So if you like it, subscribe, hit the bell, and you got more coming your way. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. See you.